everybody out there. You're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your not-so-secret identity? <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. This is Roy Samuelson. Hi. Well, welcome to the show. I, you know, I always love that line just to see what uh, how how people will react to it. Some people are like, "Oh yeah, my identity isn't really that secret." But <laughs> <laughs> just jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this is this is your first time on the show, and um, for the fans out there, I like to ask that super duper basic question, which is, "What sparked your interest into acting?" Oh, great! Uh, that's a fun question. I think. Uh, I remember in junior high school, I grew up in Pennsylvania, a very small town. And um, the uh, the earliest I could join the theater company was in ninth grade, the, the top year. And in seventh grade and eighth grade, I just kept waiting and waiting, almost like anticipating how exciting it would be to finally join the theater company. And uh, I got in the chorus and I was so excited. And I remember one of the rehearsals happened where um, uh, one of my buddies was talking to me while the uh, director was talking. And he made a joke, and I made a joke back, and uh, the, the director kicked me out. And he said, Roy, go. You have to go. And my friend turned to me, and he said, Roy, you, he just kicked you out. You have to go. And I stood there and didn't leave because I had worked, I had waited so long, and I wanted to be a part of it. And that was, the, that was such a defining moment for me, that just standing there and completely violating the request of the director <laughs> – <laughs> but uh, I wanted to be in the chorus so bad. I was so excited. So uh, that's one of the, the main memories that I think of as soon as you asked that question. You know, it, it's interesting because it sounds actually rather strict because when we had theater, um, you know, initially in, in middle school for me, uh, I just came by after school for theater club because a friend dragged me and they're like, you want a, you want a spot? We have a free spot, you know, like in this play. And I was like, okay. Can you sit there and drag somebody off stage? Sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so I, I didn't really have to have to fight to get in into it. But that, that shows that you you had, uh, you know, some dedication already to the craft without, uh, you know, a lot of experience in it. <laughs> Bludgeoning my way through it tenderly, of course. Yes. <laughs> so I, I have to wonder because... Um, you know, obviously the big thing, especially with voiceover, is that it's acting first. That is that is the big thing. So h- how do you feel that, that uh, theater and um, acting classes in school really helped you for that? Oh, great question. I think um, there's two sides to it that I love to, to focus on. Obviously, the, the acting performance side. It's uh, I, I feel like voiceover is one of the – I've heard this from so many different coaches and performers that – voiceover is such a pure form of performance there's a um, as much as there's technicality with being in front of the mic and uh, making sure your peas don't pop uh, there's also such a freedom to be able to uh, perform uh, without the uh, i'm sorry i'm getting lost in my sentence here but yes that's uh, the theater has definitely helped just with the performance getting into the character finding the intentions um, and speaking to somebody uh, instead of uh, treating the microphone as if I'm going out to thousands of people, it's uh, speaking to one particular person. I think the other side. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) Uh, Sorry. Uh, And my favorite part of the theater experience that helps me with voiceover is actually the business side. And this is a, a total tangent seeming here, but uh, when I was in theater, I learned that, you know, you've got a deadline to make it to dress rehearsal or the, the first performance. There's there's politics with the different people that you're working with. You're constantly learning new lines. There's there's change. The set breaks. The uh, this actor isn't feeling well. Um, there there's so much unexpected, and you still got to roll with it and adjust and go with it. Uh, the interpersonal skills, the um, the newness of it all, and I found that all that helps. Uh, on the business side uh, when it comes to, to theater. I can elaborate that later, about that later on. Flying by the seat of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Controlled chaos. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. I, I mean, you see that I feel like a lot with people who are fascinated with the business and they want to jump into voiceover and they don't really have any acting experience. 
and the the decision is to oh yeah I can totally do this and they and they don't think about the business side of it or the advertising side of it or what changes might happen and things like that. Um, so I, I like the fact that you're acknowledging that that was something you learned from theater because I, I don't feel like a lot of people who who try and jump into it understand how valuable that is. Oh, uh, wow, well, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's been invaluable. I, I know a lot of people have made jokes about, oh, you did theater in college or, or high school or whatever. And there really is a lot to learn there. And I think it's easy to dismiss it because it's theater, it's performance. But uh, all those experiences, working with other people and, and meeting goals and, and getting things done, uh, I think really help. Yeah, certainly. And and so I have to wonder, you know, after school, what was the next step in your career? Um, what, what was the, did you pack all your bags and go, I'm going to LA, mom? <laughs> <laughs> uh, during my college years, I participated in the, uh, the Disney college program uh, down in Florida. It was uh, basically a semester uh, that Disney hosted. And uh, I got my doctorate degree. Thank you very much. With a little Donald Duck insignia on it. <laughs> That's cute. The uh, University of Central Florida offered some classes as well, and uh, the whole experience was, uh, it's actually my first paid job talking into a microphone. I was a, a gangster at the Great Movie Ride, and uh, basically played this baby-faced gangster who hijacks the vehicle, and uh, you know, there's a spiel to do, and talking in the mic, and uh, it, was, uh, it was so much fun, and with each practice, I think the total show lasted maybe eight or 10 minutes, at least my portion of it. And uh, with the repetition of doing that 20 some times a day, it could get repetitive or it could be a, a great way to karate kid Mr. Miyagi it where you know, wax on, wax off. You just practice and see what changes. See how this this adjustment, how does that feel? How was the reaction there? How does So it was incredible practice to play with the mic and, and performance there. Yeah, I could, I could totally see that. Now, obviously, I'm a, I'm a west side of the, the U.S. person, so, you know, we have Disneyland. But I've gotten to go to Disney World once, um, and it was it was really hard to try and fit all of the different parks in, in one day. So I actually don't think I got a chance to go on that ride. Which is uh, I, I don't even I don't even necessarily know if it's still there, but I, I imagine that the magic of working with so many people from so many different uh, cultures and ages is really great experience as well. Absolutely, it was. Uh, it's been a long time since then, and I'm still in touch with the majority of those people on on Facebook or or email or even visiting. It's uh, it's a really special group, and you're right. It was. Uh, incredibly diverse group of people. I had uh, just my roommates alone were uh, just a total random spectrum. And coming from such a small town in Pennsylvania, it was uh, it was really welcoming and exciting and neat to see, oh, this person has a totally different experience of, of life than I do. Let's talk about that. Let's, let's, uh, there's such curiosity and excitement. So how did you take these, these performances that were on stage and kind of wrap them into a bundle, if you will, and prepare to like audition for, for something in voiceover. It's been a, uh, I'm still practicing. This is a, a work in progress with every step of the way. Uh, part of the, um, uh, I, there was a, at one point I had a, a basic list of different things I would do for each audition of, um, different intentions that I could play with different, uh, ways to adjust my voice that could, uh, make it, uh, just a little adjustments that I could play with at a moment's notice. And that was really helpful just to get started. Um, I think that the more auditions I've done, whether it's from my home studio or at casting offices, it's been, um, it's still a work in progress. I think every experience is different. There's, a, uh, there's no one set of rules that I follow. And again, back to the theater, not knowing what you're getting into when, uh, I'm having a flashback to my college days where uh, one of my friend's pants fell down during the show and we were all speaking in rhyming couplets and <laughs> there was some improvisation, almost Dr. Seuss-like, that uh, incorporated that experience. So you never know what's got to happen. And that's uh, that could be scary, but uh, 
it could also be really exciting. It's like, oh, I, I wonder what's going to happen here. Coming with that curiosity sure has made auditions a lot more fun. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. No, you you totally are. And and I have to say um, one thing in relation to uh, the pants falling down, not quite, but a little bit. <laughs> when, when, when you talk about um, uh, something I learned when I was a little kid is that when you get on stage, you get adrenaline and sometimes you get scared. But when you do it, you feel so much better about it. And I feel like adrenaline is kind of like if you don't feel the adrenaline, you know, like or the stage fright or whatever you want to call it, then it's not right. <laughs> That's great. That's interesting. I like that. It's like a good um, jump start, you know, like, okay. <laughs> sure. Means I'm actually about to do it. <laughs> There's a, I've, I've really enjoyed the psychology of that. There's uh, many different coaches and books that I've read that have talked about that adrenaline. And it's, I'm going to condense most of what they've said, and at least my interpretation of it, is that by adding breath to that adrenaline, that's what changes it from scared to excited. That it almost by allowing it to breathe and not trying to, to block it up or plug it, but by, by letting it just be there, um, literally by breathing through it. That, have, at least for me, has definitely changed the, from that scared, nervous, shaky negativity, the, the negative adrenaline, say, to, uh, to almost a positive. Uh, I like roller coasters, so I'll use that example. It's like a roller coaster. We're just about to the top. Let's go. Yeah, this is great. And it's simply by breathing. Uh, you and I would get along. I love roller coasters. Oh, good. Oh, when, I was, out here. <laughs> when I was in Florida, I, I rode on the Hulk like six times because there was nobody there. And I'm like, oh. I got to do this on every different like seat position I can do. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm that person. And so uh, some some of my friends don't don't like that aspect. They're oh, like, yeah. no, I, w- I won't get on a moving cart going that fast. And I'm like, where's where's your fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so much fun. I love roller coasters. That's, I've never been on the Hulk. That's the uh, Universal one, right? Yes. Um, uh, literally in December. That, that's why I think it's funny that you mentioned uh, Disney World. Um, I was – I had this business trip that lasted like 10 days to where – I was going from the Game Awards in LA to the PlayStation Experience in Anaheim to Florida for like an indie film thing to New York for an audition that I can't talk about because NDA ninjas. And when I was in Florida, yeah, no, it it was kind of nuts because it was it was right around the holidays, um, and that's why I'm taking a break from cons uh, for for a little bit. But um, any anyway, so when I was in Florida, I had the chance to go to to Disney World for one day and Universal for another. And Universal was so empty at the beginning of December. It was fantastic. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, couldn't do like Wet and Wild because it was it was kind of rainy. But I'll take it any day if I can go on every single ride in Universal and go back to my hotel happy. <laughs> wow, what a great experience in the midst of all that chaos. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, but and and I got to see some of the the performers there. I, I'm always kind of inspired by you know like face characters and the and the different kind of performances they hold at the parks because it, it it's it's just a different medium. You know, like it, it's it's different than when you absorb like say an animation or a video game and you're listening to somebody's performance versus when you're seeing it. You know, right in front of you and you're experiencing it and there's some improv there. Yeah. So oh, sorry, I, uh, no, I, I I'm just curious. Um, do do you uh, do you feel that um, improv from um, theater and things like that have have helped you with your voiceover uh, career? Absolutely. And if I would have spent more time with it, I I'm sure that my career would be at a a stronger place. The uh, uh, when I first moved to Los Angeles, I took a a trip up to um, Calgary to the theater sports. Uh, Keith Johnstone taught a, a class up there. And uh, what a great, yeah, just great training. There's all sorts of different kinds of improv training. And in Los Angeles alone, there's there's five or six that I can think of off the top of my head. And the people that have spent their time with improv, no matter how they started, even if they were the most dry and, and say, are you sure you want to be an actor kind of people that, after committing to it and following the rules that those improv classes teach, they have just exploded uh, in such a positive way, both, uh, I think, both personally and as well as performing, as, and obviously the connections that they're making with the, uh, the other improvisers. It, um, it's a really exciting time to see how improv, I think, has kind of 
been a great, not shortcut, but uh, it's one of the most well-rounded good skills uh, for, um, for performance. And it's, it, I'm not saying that Roy's saying that that's coming from casting directors and producers and directors and other actors that you can see uh, their careers blossoming. It's, it's really exciting. Yeah, no, thinking on your feet is definitely an asset. And one of the things you mentioned a little bit earlier that I kind of want to touch upon because um, for, for the, for the you know, would-be voice actors out there that want to get started, um, you said you had a, a home studio. And with the, the advancement of technology and, and, and whatnot, you know, it, a lot of people think that they can just buy any kind of mic and just pick it up and start uh, straight away, start today for only nine ninety nine. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I think a little bit more goes into that. So can you maybe talk a little bit about um, your setup and your home studio? Sure. Um, I think technically it's, uh, there, so there's the technical side and then also the, what you bring to the mic. So uh, uh, if I can try to remember those two parts, but I got to tell you, Jackie, there's been times where my home studio has been my car and my microphone has been my smartphone. And I've booked jobs off of that. So when it comes to the actual technical side, yes, yeah, it's, it's really important. But there's also other aspects to it, too, that, um, that are really important. But when I first – I guess what I could do is um, – right now I've got a whisper room. And it's, uh, it's a four by six space. So on one side I stand up and the other side I can sit down and, uh, it's just set up just the way I like it. And, um, there's, there's different tweaks and adjustments that I've done to it, but if I could back, I'll, I'll come back to that, but backing up a little bit, when I first started with my agency, I had bought two bifold closet doors from home Depot and covered them up with a, a quilt. And I think I was using just a, a cheap USB microphone. Um, and that was a great start. It got me playing with it and seeing, oh, this is how I, this is how I can do this, or this adjustment really makes a big difference. Um, I think I was using a free software at the time too, so it was a, a relatively inexpensive studio when I first started. So I have to ask about the the whisper room. I've never gotten a chance to try those personally. I'm I'm a fan of Studio Bricks myself. Um, oh, cool! Very nice. Um, but you know, I, I kind of have to ask. You know, how do you how do you like uh, how do you like your whisper room, and does it suit your needs, and and all that fun stuff? <laughs> sure. Oh, there's there's so many different aspects to the the whisper room. I got the uh, I don't remember the terminology, but it's basically circulation. Um, it's uh, it's enhanced sound something, which basically not mutes, but it definitely muffles the the air circulation. So I can be in there for hours now without having to worry about losing oxygen yeah you don't um, you don't like burst out of the green Mommy, <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly so that's important to me i've worked in other whisper rooms that have a uh, double wall and that's really cool uh this particular whisper room has moved with me let's see one two three four i think it's moved five times i've been in five different locations with that it may have been four and just the ease of its building and how quick it can come up. At least now it's quick for me. Um, that's made a big difference just because I've relocated so many times. Well, for the fans out there, um, you know, to, to um, keep up to date with, um, you know, what you're doing and um, other projects that you might be doing, not, not just in your whisper room, but at the studio, um, is there a place they can find you like online, stalk you in a nice way? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, my website. And I can share with you the, uh, the link. Um, uh, well, it's, it's RoySamuelson.com. Uh, it's funny. We were talking about uh, updating the, uh, the website. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> I think uh, it does need a, a few more tweaks there, but it definitely helps with work. You're not the only one. I'm like a year behind on mine, so I'll feel bad with you. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, oh, and uh, I just realized one more thing. Can I mention uh, uh, one of the most in important influences of at least the – I'm a full-time voiceover person now, but one of the, the biggest gifts that has happened to me since I moved to Los Angeles that kind of got my career going? Yeah, please do. It's, uh, it's the people. Uh, I've been lucky enough to get some really – incredible mentors, uh, both friends and people who have done this before. And, uh, 
Uh, I'm sure Bob Bergen is ubiquitous on the on the websites of uh, of people that um, that listen to this, and he's uh, he's definitely by sharing on Facebook Live as well as his website has a lot of great information both for the beginner and, and ongoing, and um, it's uh, I think it's really it's been really important for me to be able to to talk to someone because it helps take away the assumptions of what I think I'm getting into and kind of ground in reality some things that uh, that are true and maybe give me some more ideas that I hadn't thought of that maybe take me 10 years to figure out instead of three conversations. You know, I can, I can definitely see that. That's actually kind of a, a big reason why we ask a lot of the questions we do with a lot of our guests is, you know, you might not have the connections to get to talk to these people in real life, you know, but at least you can kind of hear their story and, and take some, some value from it and, and maybe kind of apply it to your own career or your own adventures, whether it's in voiceover or music or, or what have you. But yeah, he's great. Anytime I, want, I need a little bit of inspiration or I'm feeling tongue-tied, which, could, which happens uh, quite a bit because of the way I speak. Um, I, just, I, I just watch his, uh, there's, a, there's a clip of him explaining how he does Porky Pig, and I, I'm pretty sure it's from a, from a documentary, and the name is escaping me. But I'll just watch like that 30-second clip, and I'll be like, okay, if he can do that, I can try and do this. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, for all the fans out there, we've, we've got to, you know, we've got your website for them to check out. Do you, do you do any social media? Do you do any Facebook or Twitter? Are you, are you not into those? Uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, the Facebook, I think, is Roy Samuelson Biz, B-I-Z, uh, at Roy Samuelson Biz. And then Instagram is Roy Samuelson. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not too frequently on either of those, but uh, when I am, it's, it's kind of fun to, to be a part of that. Yeah, Instagram is my, well, not new addiction anymore, most like a year-long addiction that I haven't, haven't broken yet. Yeah. <laughs> I've only got 11 filter apps on my phone. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, like, I, I like messing with, with all the different features that you can kind of do with that. Um, oh, it gives so me something exciting. to do, yeah, especially when, sure. you're, when you're in the passenger seat of a car or something. Right. <laughs> There we go. But, Prepping for all those cons that you're going on, or you're yeah. on a con break now. So I guess it yes, matter. after eight years. <laughs> oh Brandon, wow! I have, yeah, I, ha I have a I have a con this weekend though. I'm not upset oh, about right. it, but you know it's okay. okay. Um, but, <laughs> but for the fans out there, are there any projects that are that are coming out soon, or that you're working on that you can share with them? I can't, uh, and that's it's so exciting. But I I, I do have to be quiet. But uh, I will do my best to keep uh, updated on my website. No, we understand. We don't want those NDA ninjas to come out of nowhere and just, yeah. <laughs> I love that you call them NDA ninjas. I just have imagined like Kubo and the two strings, like these characters cut out, just like doing their thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's perfect. I love that movie. Um, yeah, no, the, the, other, the other one is uh, that we, NDA snipers, like we, we talk about the red oh, dot. It's on your, gotcha. we know it's on your forehead right now, so you can't talk about it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we find that a lot of uh, a lot of um, people either aren't familiar with NDAs or are kind of like nudge people to go, "Hey, come on, you can say it." It's like, no, no, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> nudge people. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's coming from a, a good place. It's all exciting because everybody wants to know. That's it's always fun finding out information first or right away. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. But we don't want to get you in trouble because that would be bad. <laughs> but. Since we're nearing the end of this interview, I was wondering uh, if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> I'm just jumping in. Let's do it. Okay, cool. We ask everyone to do this, whether they're a voice actor or not. We basically ask if you would be able to do a radio bump for us. Oh, okay. The trick of it, however, is that we do the takes live on air. So if you mess up, everybody hears it. <laughs> gotcha. All right. <laughs> So I can, since we're actually on Skype, I can type this to you to make it easier. Um, right. But uh, we basically ask if you could say, hello, my name is, I do this, you can put whatever you want there, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. <laughs> so do you want me to type that out for you? I think I got it. And what if I mess it up? Then we're live and we'll just figure out what happens. We'll just, we'll just try it again. <laughs> do take All right. two. All right. Whenever cool. you're ready. 
Hello, my name is Roy Samuelson. I do voiceover, and you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. How's that? You didn't mess it up. You're perfect. Congratulations. Oh, wow. Well, too, so I can screw it up. I mean, you can if you <laughs> <laughs> Take a breath in the middle of something, kind of squeak on one of the word, and kind of get that, make... get that nice plosive in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't want to hurt the live recording, but you know I could. Just put that microphone right up there. <laughs> But, but for the fans out there, are there any, you know, words of wisdom you'd like to leave them with? Any dating advice, predictions for the end of the world, anything like that? Oh, those those are four different six-hour <laughs> conversations. Uh, we try. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely think that uh, I, I'm going to boil it down to two completely opposite things, finances and gratitude. That uh, when it comes to finances, set your budget and stick with it. And uh, with gratitude, it's very easy to lose sight of all the positive things that happen because there's always a to-do list. There's always going to be something that needs to be done or maybe wasn't done right. And uh, it's it seems ubiquitous on the Internet, at least the articles that I'm reading, that uh, taking that time every day just to find five or ten things that, that either make you happy or you're grateful for or that uh, you did for someone else that make you feel good, that that has uh, at least personally been an incredible gift to be able to hang on to when uh, it's easy to lose sight of that. I think that's great advice. It's it's definitely something, you know, even if it's at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, you can think about it before you go to bed instead of yeah. thinking about worries or concerns yeah. or anything. <laughs> I am a professional you. worrier, so this is definitely coming hard. <laughs> oh, me too. You yeah, know, I'm that person. It's like, uh, you, you know, it's like, why are you worried about that? How have you not thought about it? How have you not thought about it? the multiple different ways? That's me as well. <laughs> but, yeah. but thank you so much for joining us today. This was a lot of fun. All right. Thanks so much, Jackie. I'm going to go uh, YouTube riding the Hulk at Universal now. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and for any of the fans out there that missed any of this interview, don't sweat it. You can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and your ears tuned to 91.8 The Fan, where we play everything you want and nothing you don't.